Hello and welcome to Project Beats. Today we are updating my hi-hat setup which is this one. I tore apart the dual zone trigger uh, from Go eDrum and they just updated it with a very small dual trigger box that fits um, between the hi-hat. As you can see there's a cable protruding out that connects nicely into this um, membrane no soldering this time it just plugs like so and you're good so that's what we will be doing today i'm also updating my um, low volume symbols from this silver to this beautiful b20 low volume symbols from the same company tong siang uh, i got it from alibaba um, only problem with this is it's too, it's too soft, it's too bendy. I already broke my uh, splash though, but still it looks good. I think um, we'll see how long it lasts. First things first, we're gonna drill a hole here so that the um, cable can go in from down under here. This will be the bottom uh, piece of the hi hat. Last time I used this step drill bit i'm not sure if they're really made to be used for metal so hopefully it works we'll see let's use this metal drill bit first um let's see okay you that's too big Okay, we got a big chunk, chunk there. I think that does it. Yep. Okay, let's just file a little bit of the rough edge. I know it doesn't look good, but let me show you one trick I do. I get a rubber grommet like this one and then I'll I just cut it in half so it's like this what I do is I insert the cable first if you can see that insert the cable first here right easy and then what I do is I just replace the grommet there there you go so that that's the same way I, I do when you when you want to take it off. I just remove the grommet, rubber grommet, and then uh, take that off. That's it. For the dual zone, the membrane has to be on top. Don't ask if you can put it on the bottom. It will be useless if you put it underneath. So, it's going to be on top. This thing comes with a nice ribbon cable like this that plugs into... The one I just showed you plugs into the main trigger box. So this becomes the bow, this becomes your edge. And then if you pinch this, it will choke the symbol. For the hi-hat, you don't really need this choke because you you can you can choke it with the foot. I'm still going with this setup because I want that two different sound. So I'm getting a bow sound when hitting this part. And then I'm also getting the edge sound, which which are two different sounds but the thing is you need to drill a larger hole right there if you can see okay you have to do that so you can insert this cable like so so it goes under and then this trigger goes in here and then you can just plug in i'll figure it out later but this trigger screws in one of uh couple of holes here just make sure you're not going too far too far here right so that it doesn't close the hi-hat doesn't close um just make sure you're on the right the perfect balance right there so for me i think this is this is good let's try to close if i put it there yep cleared so it doesn't touch that you can still close it i think it clears yeah so I'll put it on that, uh, this 
part. All right, I guess let's take it. I'm working here, by the way, because the wife is using the table. Working from home, right? So I hope you guys are doing okay. So this is my workshop. All right, so this thing comes with a rubber sticky back, just like the Merck membrane. Okay, here we go. Put that there. Slide it in. I want to start off in the middle, then work my way around. Just make sure you're 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 really on the edge here. Okay, I'm just lining it up towards the edge, making sure I am perfect. Okay. But you have to really have to bend a little bit to get to get at the edge. Right there. Yes. Wow, okay, that's a nice fit. All right. Okay, so I was able to temporarily um, place it underneath using uh, some plastic uh, washers. You will have this cable uh, poking out like that. What you will do is just uh, bend this and attach it like that. And hope it works. <laughs> you can set this up however you want to. For now, I think this is this is gonna work for me. That is very clean, so it closes no issues. You can see, you still actually have a bit of clearance before the trigger box touches the bottom part. I'll try it out. I may have to add some damping to reduce the double triggering and vibrations underneath the top hat. All right, I was finally able to print the correct size, the correct fit, everything works well with the hi-hat extension part. But before I show you that, let me play you a bit of a demo first. This is the reason why I went for a dual zone hi-hat. And I would also encourage you to do so if you are going this route. Uh, with the two zone hi-hat, you have two different sounds. You have the and you have the you have the edge. You can play a lot more dynamics. You have different sounds as you would if you are playing an actual acoustic hi-hat. Let me show you how it would sound if you only got single zone for the hi-hat. So let me just unplug that. Okay, that should be single zone. Okay, big difference there. So it's a lot more dynamic with the, with the dual zone for the hi-hat. You have a lot more expression, if you would, for uh, with the two zone hi-hat. Now for the hi-hat size, you are basically tied to whatever edge membrane you get. The edge membrane that is available out there will be 12 inch, 14 inch, 16, 18, and 20. As far as I know, those odd numbers is really hard to find or is non-existent at all. So I would recommend you to just go ahead and get the 14 inch for the hi-hat. I previously have the 13 inch. I had to bend the membrane to, to fit. I kind of wish I just went with a 14 inch for, for the hi-hat, but that's that. I already got this. Uh, this will probably stick with me for a long time. In terms of pros and cons, the edge membrane is a bit more sensitive than the Merc in that you don't need to build it up with a foam riser to get that consistent and accurate response. But the con is it's a bit too responsive where sometimes I get a mute sound if I hit it at a certain angle. So, so kind of like that. 
right? So there's a bit of a learning process with a hi-hat hit. So just don't lean on too much to the edge so that you mute it. So you just have to be careful with that. That's the only downside I can think of at the moment. I will try to give a um, comprehensive review in a couple of weeks of, uh, of playing. See if any issues arise. Okay, so here it is, finally. Okay, so as you can see, the this, this is the rod piece. Let me take it apart and show it to you quickly. Okay. So this is how it looks. It's a two-piece part. You got the you got the main base for the extension. I, I put my logo in there. I uh, hope that's okay with you. So I, this will sit perfectly on top of a Go eDrum hi hat controller, and then this is the extension rod so this will extend and be able to reach the underside of the hi-hat clutch so this goes in first and you get you get this part right here i am using a simpad hi-hat seat i kind of sanded this part a little bit the one that touches the bottom part of the hi-hat the the material i use for the 3d print is called pla it's not really uh smooth when you print it you have to sand it off to to get that smooth surface so that's what i did there um bottom hi-hat piece goes in y you have to fish your cable through but now you can see this rod would hit that bottom of the hi-hat clutch this setup would be perfect for my case, for my symbols. So the size of the rod would depend on what type of low volume symbols you're using. Let me explain that in a bit. Let's go here. So you can see that high hat calibration, right? So this is our open position. If I step on the pedal, it will go all the way close. See? You got open all the way close. Okay. This rod is perfectly calibrated to my to my hi hat. I'll be uploading this on my online store. You can get it for a small gift to this channel. I really appreciate you guys who support this channel. It helps me to continue making these videos. Let me explain one thing about this rod. The height of the rod should be exact with the type of hi hat that you that you have. So in any case, I will print out two different heights of the of the rod, so you have an option, kind of like this. This is some of the early tests that I printed. This is too short, so I will include this height of the rod. The long one, I think, is fifty two. And this one is about 40, 40, I think. So I will inc include both. Here's what you can do. So if you if you get this rod, or if you print decide to print both, if it's too long, you can just cut off the long ones. Or if it's if this is too short, I'll show you what I do before when I was testing this. This is still a DIY, you know, DIY setup. So it's just there to help you um, be able to use two piece hi hat, but. I don't guarantee that the height of the rod will be perfect for you. So let me teach you a workaround. If any case that your rod is short, like like for example this, the size of your hi-hat would affect the accuracy of the, the rod and also the type of hi-hat seat you have. I got this because this doesn't have like too much give. So it will be consistent uh, for a long time. That's why I decided to go get this that's one reason so just for example if if the rod is too short this one for you this one don't really like touch the hi-hat yet nothing is happening so so see it's not even touching the the hi-hat clutch what i would do this is what i would do before when i was testing this what i would do is i would get us 
uh, symbol, symbol sleeve, like a symbol saver like that. Cut it to size, whatever you need, and just insert it there. You can glue it, you can tape it, whatever you want. And now, this, this will be, let me show you that. Okay, it's be perfect. Right, okay. That's that's an easy workaround. I would prefer this than cutting the 3D print. I wouldn't want to touch that 3D print. I would just go do this as a workaround. So, but in any case, I would include both. And one last thing is, I would recommend to print this. Use ABS, the good type ABS. You can easily smoothen it with a acetone. Just go ahead and search on YouTube how to smoothen ABS print. That would help with this uh, issue. So you have a smooth print. Another way you can do is just is print the rod uh, using maybe carbon fiber material. Depends on what you want, but uh, those are the, the tips for you when using this uh, contraption <laughs> that I have built with the help of my younger brother, actually. So I hope this video helps you and uh, give me a thumbs up. If you like it, comment down in the video below if you have any questions or suggestions, maybe. I read all your comments. Well, only a few of you who really writes, but I appreciate guys and I appreciate your support. If you haven't yet, please consider subscribing and uh, see you on the next project. Bye.